Hey, this is Timmy G. Welcome to my video on the best way to record a DJ mix when streaming. So a lot of people have commented on my videos and said that it's difficult to, to record when they are uh, using Spotify or they wanted some workarounds. So about a year ago, I made a video on how to do that. And that way was good, but I was using my 2011 MacBook that had a line in uh, input. And most of the new ones now, new laptops now do not have a line input. So, I also made one with a very cheap USB audio interface, and that one was good, but it only allowed you to record a mono mix. This method that I'm going to show you uh, involves using a device that allows you re to record a stereo mix, and it will work with any, uh, any computer, Mac or PC, and it's great. I think I got it for about $40 on, the, um, on Amazon, uh, and yeah, let me just get it real quick. So this is the Behringer UCA222, and it is an audio interface that you can plug in via USB, and uh, it's great because it allows you to do stereo input, which is awesome for recording DJ sets. Um, usually, if you're gonna record a DJ set, you might wanna record with your uh, software's built-in um, record function, but uh, if you're streaming, then that, that's probably not gonna be allowed. And since streaming is probably uh, the future of DJing, or at least one component of the future of DJing, uh, it's very important that we're able to record our sets no matter what. So this method that I'm about to show you is gonna be a great way to do that. So uh, the way to set this up is to obviously first plug it in to the laptop. And you can see this light uh, come on. That shows you that it's working, it's on, um, and it's all good. Now I'm gonna take my RCA cable and I'm gonna plug it in to the master output on my DDJ-1000. So, just really quickly so you guys can see it on the screen. That is right here. So plug that here, and then I'll plug this in there. So now my master two is outputting to this RCA cable. So I'm gonna put this DDJ-1000 back, hopefully in a good spot. And now, what I'm going to do with this, the, the other side of this cable, is I'm going to take this and plug it into the input of our uh, Behringer audio interface. And the best part about this is that, like I mentioned before, this is a stereo input. So I'm able to record my set and get both the left and the right channel. Um, a lot of audio interfaces, especially the cheaper ones, uh, basically have stereo output and then a mono input for microphone, which is fine for most people, but for DJs, we want our sets that we record to be the highest quality, and that is gonna be uh, including a stereo channel. So anyway, next thing I am going to do is going to be on the laptop. So uh, what I wanna do here is I'm gonna open up DJ Pro, And I'm gonna go to my Timmy G playlist once it loads. And um, now I'm gonna to go to my, it's been a little slow here. Now I'm gonna to go to my preferences and devices. And I just wanna make sure that uh, my main output, main pre-queuing, everything is uh, the DDJ 1000 here because that's the controller I'm using here and I'm, and I'm outputting my sound from my controller still. Uh, but I just wanna make sure that my devices, like I, right now I have a, a bunch of different uh, audio interface devices possible. So I just want, we just wanna make sure that the, the controller that we're using is the device that is our audio in DJ Pro 2, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna load up my new track change up. And now I'm gonna, I would like to demo uh, how we can record this. So if you have seen my last two videos on this similar topic of recording sets, you would know that um, I did GarageBand in my first video and I did Logic Pro in my second video. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna actually show another option which is free for every user, both Mac users and PC users, and that's Audacity. If you've been in the audio editing world, you've probably heard of this. It's a great open source uh, software for basic audio editing and recording. 
So I literally just downloaded it today. I've never really used it uh, before, at least recently. Um, so I'm gonna open that up. And it is pretty simple to use. So I'm just gonna full screen it, I believe. I played around with it for like 10 minutes before this. So uh, I believe right here is where you pick your input. And I, this thing is, according to the computer, called the uh, audio, when I say this thing, I mean my Behringer audio controller or audio interface. Uh, it is called the USB Audio CODEC codec. So that's our choice. I think you can also go to preferences and then go to device for recording. And these are all the options that you have for recording. But uh, the important part is we want stereo right here. We want two channels and that option is given here. Okay. And then output doesn't really matter. Um, I guess it matters just so you can hear your set. So anyway, I'm going to go to tracks right here, add new. And then I'm going to add a stereo track. That's the whole point of this. We want a stereo mix. So I want to add a stereo track. Now, like I said, I am a very much so a beginner on the software. I would never use this software uh, because I'm, I feel so much more comfortable with Logic Pro. But um, this is a free version. Logic Pro costs 200 bucks and it's not available on PCs. So anyway, um, I believe what, I, what, what, what we would do here is hit the record button. And then I'm gonna go back to DJ Pro and just make sure my levels are set. So I'm gonna move this off my DDJ 1000 now. And because our output is coming out of the um, master right here, the master output, this is what I'm going to uh, change. So I'm gonna hit play right here. And I see that right on my meter right here that I'm not getting, um, above negative 12, which is perfect. That's plenty of headroom. Uh, we don't want it to go too much higher than that because it might risk um, clipping, okay? So anyway, I'm gonna hit pause right here on my DDJ-1000. I'm gonna go back here. And then if we see in Audacity, I'm gonna stop that too, but I, I just hit the space bar. We see that we have our, um, uh, there's a waveform that recorded. So I'm gonna play it back. I'm gonna turn the volume up on my laptop. I'm not currently recording my laptop audio. Um, although I could, if I, wanted to, if I wanted to, with this thing. So anyway, I'm gonna, up. Oh, you probably can hear that now. So that's just my laptop's audio, but it sounds pretty good right now. Now, um, another concern that some people have, and that, that I've had too, is uh, what do I do about listening to my own mix? Like you can use your headphones. I don't. I technically don't have any headphones plugged in, but this is just a, a demo. Um, but if I was actually going to record a set, I would use headphones. But um, but that that's not to hear your main output. So my re recommendation would be to plug in something to your booth outputs. Okay. So. Um, what I would do there is I would grab a cable that would work for my booth output. And all I can find right now is this uh, mono guitar cable. I could technically do it into two, but um, my speaker that, I, that I'm going to hear my playback on, I don't care if it's just mono, so this is going to be fine for me. All right, so I just plugged in this guitar cable, which is really just a mono TS to mono TS into a speaker that's off camera. And now I'm gonna play my track. I'm not gonna record it anymore because you get the idea of recording. Um, I'm gonna play the track from DJ Pro 2. And now the booth monitor level on the controller is gonna control that. So I'm gonna turn my speaker volume up slowly. So I just hit play and I'm turning my volume up on my speaker. And you can hear that now. And I just changed that and it got quieter now. And I changed that here. All right, 
so you get the idea. So now we are we have outputs coming out of our master and our booth. We can hear our booth output and we can record through our master output through this Behringer uh, audio interface. The last step would be to um, to basically, I, in logic, we call it bounce this uh, this the recording of your mix. I, I, it's probably export in other softwares. And once again, I'm very much so a beginner. So I believe what you do is you click on here, you click and drag the part that you want to select. And I want to select that. And I think you hit delete. Yeah, so I, I just clicked and selected the part that I wanted to delete, and I hit delete. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I just deleted that. And um, from now, I could export. I don't know exactly how I would change the gain. In Logic Pro, I would um, either increase the gain or add a limiter. I don't exactly know how to do that in the software, uh, but I'm sure that there is a tutorial on Audacity on how to do that. But to export, I think you go to File, Export, Export as MP3 or wave, but since we're recording on Spotify, um, 320 kilobits per second is the highest bit rate. So that is the MP3 bit rate. So let's see, untitle, I'll call it test. And where documents is fine, MP3 files. Um, let's see, bit rate, mode. I would go to, um, Insane, I guess they think it's insane, to 320 kilobits per second. Uh, joint stereo or stereo is fine. And that is good. You can put all this um, metadata if you want. I'm going to skip that. And it just finished. So if I go to my documents right here, there's my recording. Um, and it's in an mp3 So that is how to use the uh, Behringer UCA 222 I believe uh, with audacity to record Your set and that that works if you're streaming or if you're not streaming now you might be watching this video and You might not have a four channel controller or a controller that has uh, multiple outputs you might have a kind of a more basic controller like this is a ddjrb uh, which is the predecessor to the ddj 400 by pioneer dj it's an awesome controller it can do so much and it's really cheap given the uh capabilities of this controller um and the DD ddj 400 is just a better version a newer version of this um and there is a way using our favorite behringer uh, uca 222 that i'm finally learning to pronounce and um the way is this. So, we're going to take our RCAs and plug it in to the output. Whoops, I just moved the camera. So, right here and right here. Okay, so now, just line that up. All right, so now we're all, we're all set. Our audio is plugged in here. And another cool thing, well, actually, first, I'm going to plug this into the laptop. There we go. So the, the little light turn on. Uh, anyway, the other cool thing about this is it has a head, headphone monitor. So it can listen to what you are um, inputting into this device. So right here, there's a tiny switch. It says... Uh, monitor on and off. Uh, if you have that on, then you can monitor what you're listening to. Um, so basically, the the reason that you'd want this uh, capability, if you're using just like a simpler controller that just has one output, is if you're using the output to record, then you can't hear your mix. Okay, so like in what, with the DDJ 1000 that I, that I just did, I was able to use the booth output to listen. But here I can't do that. Well, with this, I uh, I can just plug in a um, cable. And have an output from this to another speaker or to headphones, but hopefully you'd mix with the um, headphones on the controller. 
So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm going to take my um, audio, just this is just like a 3.5 millimeter jack. I'm gonna plug this in here, okay? And now I'm going to plug in my, uh, that the other end of that cable into my speakers, okay? And this time, I'm going to use Rekordbox just to show that this method works in any software. It's, this is really just a method on how to record audio, basically any sort of analog audio source into a digital source, okay? So I have not updated to Rekordbox 6 yet. I will do that soon. I just have not done that yet, if you are wondering. So anyway, let's say I load my track. Uh, Irish Rhythm. I put that one out a couple months ago, and if you saw the beginning of this video, you know I did uh, change up, came out very recently as well. Uh, so I'm going to move this to the side now, but the only thing, actually before I do that, I'm just going to hit play to test the audio, okay? All right, I would like to apologize because um, what I just realized is I did not plug in my DDJ-RB since the last time that I've updated Rekordbox, and it there's a new audio driver that I did not install, so I had to just pause my recording of this tutorial, and I had to install that audio driver. But anyway, now everything is working, so um, I believe I was about to show you how to both record a mix and hear the output uh, basically on another speaker so you can listen to your mix live um, to help you make a better set, a better mix. So anyway, we have our UCA222, or whatever audio interface you're gonna use. And here, I, I just plugged in my um, headphone jack to my uh, speaker, okay? So this wire is going into my speaker, which is off camera. And this um, input right here is connected to the RCA output on my DDJ RB. So anyway, just to show you how it works, and you'll be able to hear the uh, my microphone pick up the speaker. Um, I'm gonna hit play on my track Irish Rhythm. Right now we can't hear anything, but as I turn this up, we can start to hear it, and then I can even turn it up more on my speaker. Anyway, you get the gist of that. Um, so that, that is a way that we can record and hear what we're, we are recording, okay? So I know I just used Audacity with my DDJ-1000 when recording that, but now I'm going to use Logic because this is what I usually use. It's much easier for me to use it. So, and I've used this in another tutorial. So I'm going to open Logic Pro. All right, so now that I have Logic Pro open, I'm just going to quickly um, make my settings available to record this, um, my, my set from the Behringer UCA222. So I'm gonna change, I'm, I'm gonna first change this mono track to a stereo track right there, and all I did is push that. And then input, I'm gonna do input one, two, and I'm gonna go to preferences, audio and just make sure that my audio input is the correct um, device, which it is. Okay, so the device that I'm inputting is the USB audio codec, which is the right name for the Behringer. Um, now, I'm going to turn on my monitoring by hitting that right there. So I'm going to turn the speaker down. And I'm going to play my track. And we can hear it playing, okay? It's, if you hear it playing right now, it's out of the speaker audio on my computer, but it's really quiet. It's minus 30, so I can um, input more gain. And the way I'm gonna do that is I can turn my volume up on my DDJ RB using the master right there. So I actually have it all the way up. I'm gonna pause for a sec. I actually, I just put it all the way up and I'm not clipping still on Logic. But you can, I would, I would just, I mean, not necessarily get in the habit of putting it all the way up, just in case you're clipping. But right here, it should be fine. I just hit play on it, and I'm minus 10, so that should be totally fine. 
anyway, I'll record a quick little set. So I can either hit this, uh, this button right here, or I can hit R to record. And there's a metronome. So I'm gonna turn that off by clicking here, turning off the click track. Now it's not there, so I'll play a little bit of Irish rhythm. And let's say that I wanna play Change It Up right now. And now you've just heard the uh, worst DJ transition of all time, but you get the idea. And let's say I want to stop that right there. The worst ending of a DJ set of all time. Um, and then I can hit spacebar to stop this recording. Okay. And then um, quick, very quickly, I can show you how to uh, edit this. So I'm going to hit Z to get here. And I'm going to click right where the audio starts, beginning of my set, so I don't have a whole lot of empty space beforehand. It's right there. I'm going to hit Command T. That will delete that section. Well, I, I had to hit Command T, click on the section, and then delete it. Then I'll go to the end of my set, and I'm, and we can hear it out of the speaker audio of my computer. And there's the end of my set. So I'll, I'll I hit Command A to highlight everything, and then Command T to get rid of this. And then what I'm going to do, which I was unable to do in Audacity because I don't know what I'm, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I could move this to the beginning to export it, but this uh, yellow bar right here over my track is what is going to the region that's going to be exported. So you don't necessarily have to move it. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on an adaptive lim limiter, and that'll just make this a little bit louder. I'm turning. I'm going to turn the volume down on my laptop because I don't want you guys to hear it being wicked loud. So I'd say this is probably fine. Um, I'm going to turn that down. Well, you could turn it up a tad, a tad more, but. Anyway, the, the whole point is just so if you're listening to this mix with other mixes or other tracks that the um, that this is an incredibly different volume from that so you don't have to like keep changing the volume uh, if you're if a new track comes on your shuffle or whatever. But anyway, to get to bounce this out or export this, you can hit command B. And it's probably obvious that I'm much better at using Logic Pro than Audacity given my lack of Audacity skills. And I, I recorded two MP3s, so I, I can just record, uh, bounce out as an MP3. I don't need to be uncompressed. I'm choosing uh, 320 kilobits per second, which is the same thing as uh, Audacity's Insane. Okay, uh, You could write your ID, your um, metadata here, ID3 tags. I'm not going to, because this is just a test. I'm going to call this test2. And I'm going to export it out here. And if I go to this um, file right here, I hear my file. And it's in it's basically as good quality as we're gonna get. And this is my original file, just to compare. And we can hear that it's much, uh, well, maybe you guys can't hear, but it is much quieter because I didn't add that uh, extra gain on at the end. Uh, but anyway, uh, that is about it. If you made it this long, congratulations. Thank you very much for all the support. If you like this video, if it helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or video suggestions, be sure to leave a comment. If you want to see more videos like this and check out my other DJ videos, my DJ performances, and my music production tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. Change up.